In this video, we want to go ahead and start taking a look at how to trigger animation events through Mechanum instead of using the animation tool. And for that, I have a nice simple scene set up here. So we'll take a look here. I've got a little vampire set up. He's got a gun. Because nothing's scarier than a vampire with a gun, right? <laughs> anyway, so what I want to do is when I start my game here, I have uh, this jump. So when I'm running along, whoa, 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 whoa. I hit a jump, I play a sound. Whoa, 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 whoa. By the way, I am available for voice acting. <laughs> but if we take a look here, my sound goes off before my jump. Whoa, 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 whoa. And to be honest, I want that sound to go off as he starts his twirl. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, if we go ahead and jump into the code, here's the pertinent lines here. When it, anytime we press the space key, we're going to go ahead and set the trigger for jump. And then we'll call play sound, which of course down here. And we have an optional parameter for a, a float which just sets the volume in case we want it to be a little quieter. And we just play that sound. So let's go ahead and take a look at the animator itself. It's a very simple one. I have an idle and a run state, which goes back and forth depending on what my current forward speed is. But at any time I press the space key, I can transition from any state into my jump. And then I'll go from my jump to either running or walking, depending on what my speed was going into it. But I do want to go ahead and set the, the jump timing to be more precise. So we could come in and make, create a coroutine here where we say wait a, a certain amount of time and then play the sound. And that's fine. You know, that, that'll work. But there is a way to let Mechanim handle that for you. And that's what this video is about. So let's go ahead. We'll jump back into Mechanim. And my jump animation right here. Here is the FBX file. So I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom here and we're going to hit this drop down events and we can't actually do anything here. No drag or anything. We have to use the little red line down here by the play button. And of course we can scrub through as much as we want. Now let's find the frame where we want to play that sound. So I'm going to say maybe right about here. So we have the little add event button here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. We'll notice we get the little white tick here. And we get the edit animations dialog box pop up here, which looks different than the last time we've seen it. We have a lot more, I guess, flexibility here. Uh, I'm going to fill these out, not top down. I tend to do the object first, which is the script that you want to call from. And I believe mine's called vampire movement right there. And then the function that we want to call. So what was the name of that method? Mine was jump sound, I believe. Let me just go ahead and check. Yep, I'm going to call this jump sound. And we can pass in these optional parameters, a float, an int, or a string. Now, you can only pass in one. So you have to really pick and choose on what you want to do here. You can't pass in more than one. So I have my set to float. So I'm going to go 0.5. So the volume is half the volume that it was. And we should actually add a debug log statement just to show that that is being passed in. So I'm going to close that off, hit apply, always hit apply. And of course, when we play through, just like with the animation tool, it doesn't actually trigger anything off for us. So let's quickly add that debug line just to show that we are getting the, the actual value itself. I'll go ahead, save that off. Let's jump back into our scene. And there's actually one more thing we got to do in our script. Since we're calling it through the animation itself and mechanism, we don't need to call it in code anymore. So we can get rid of that line. Let's go ahead. Now we can jump back into mechanism. We'll go ahead, we'll start this up. And now when I hit the space bar, whoa, 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 whoa. the animation or the sound is where it's supposed to be. And we can see that we are getting passed in that value. Let's take a look here at the actual volume. Right here, 0. 0.5. So it is setting it right. Whoa, 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 whoa. And just to take one more quick look at that. So we set it up, here's the volume. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it sets a force. Awesome. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, anyway, there you go. A quick example on how to set animation events using Mechanism itself instead of the animation tool. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it really does help me out here on YouTube. And, uh, well, I guess I'll see you for the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>